Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this end. About uh, 10.47 p.m. here, Thursday night, February 15, 2024. Congratulations there to Timothy, uh, our latest win winner here in the member drawing. The latest earthquake activity looks like a 1.6 here across Northern California. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into it and see what we got going on here across the latest map here for the USGS. Uh, we did see somewhat elevated activity returning to the California area once again here down in Southern California. These areas did see a little bit of swarming here. Uh, some decent swarming and uh, some four pointers out here in the last week or so. It looks like today we've seen a little bit of further earthquake activity in those regions. Still uh, looking at some potential movement up here across the San Andreas Fault. Uh, looking at the magnitudes here, these are very small earthquakes, but still uh, definitely seen some movement out here across the area of Southern California. We'll continue to watch that for some further movement here. Uh, up north here along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, we got a little small earthquake there. That's going to be that one pointer uh, near the park field area. Aside from that, uh, looking at the general area across California, Northern California, fairly quiet. Uh, up around the Mount Rainier area, still seeing some earthquake activity, although it looks like most of this here is from last night and early this morning. Not a whole lot of newer activity to report here across this area. Uh, in terms of the trimmer activity here in the Cascadia subduction zone, well, we got about 341 epicenters of trimmer here today alone. So we're looking at somewhat elevated conditions here uh, in terms of trimmer activity in the last week. Let's check out, uh, because roughly that's about the time that it bega uh, began here, about the 10th time period. Let's see what we got here. 1,888. There we go. 888, magic number. Uh, specifically in this area here around the Vancouver Island ranges and also in southern Oregon, northern California. Now, we have noticed some... Uh, uh, earthquake activity whenever we see movement down here in northern california in the trimmer department we see elevated activity just upstream here across the locked area of the cascadia subduction zone not so much here across the southern oregon area but uh definitely have seen some elevated activity here across northern california so we'll continue to watch that that is somewhat of an elevated uh event here now in terms of last events here, in terms of like, you know, major trimmer activity, not really up to par in terms of that multitude. Uh, the last major event there was back in, uh, looks like October of 2022 when we've seen our, uh, you know, pretty decent uh, trimmer amount there uh, that lasted for a little bit. And you can see these regular intervals of occurrences that take place here across the Cascadia. Uh, it's been a little bit. So look at that here since uh, October of 2022. We haven't really seen, that's uh, going to be this this area right here. We haven't really seen anything that matched up to it since then. Uh, so that's a little of concern because I'm not 100% certain exactly if that means that we're looking at uh, an elevated chance of earthquake activity or maybe just pressure hasn't been uh, all that great in terms of uh, creating that subduction out here. But uh, I am leaning more towards that everything's fairly locked out here. It's been 324 years since we've seen a rupture out here across the Cascadia. Uh, definitely uh, need to keep an eye on things here. We'll continue to watch that and report back on anything uh, that may change out here. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up, but, uh, you know, I, I got to check it. I want to double check. I, I have that, uh, you know, that fear of missing out so to speak because i've i've uh covered the usgs map here on occasion and uh nothing going on in yellowstone uh, at least on the earthquake map there from the usgs and then there'll be like a, a major earthquake swarm going on but nothing being reported so i always like to double check the raw data out here the actual recorded seismograph stations here and there's really not a whole lot going on here across yellowstone for now that is a sleeping giant, and it's probably best that it remains sleeping, right? Um, further out and about, really no large-scale movement, no uh, no further activity out here. Things look to be backing off slightly out here across the North American plate. Of course, we have seen 
quite a bit of movement out here across the western Pacific here in the last 24 hours. That could be the reason why we're seeing a little bit of relief out here across the west coast. But uh, really, we definitely need to stay on guard out here for now because uh, still seeing some, a little bit of elevated activity out here across Southern Cal. Uh, into the big island of Hawaii we go. A little bit of earthquake activity here across the Mauna Loa region tonight. Uh, looks like, well, some of that from last night, some from tonight. A um, couple earthquakes up there, up around the uh, eastern flank here of the Mauna Loa region. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the activity here, see, uh, see if anything's going on out there across the area. So, uh, still looks like Mauna Loa is still sitting at a green. Uh, meaning that there's no unusual activity going on here across the area, but I do like to just double check things, right? Uh, the USGS map here, usgs.gov slash volcanoes, has a, uh, a decent amount of instruments out here in terms of monitoring the volcano activity, tilt meters, GPS stations, gas emission stations, infrasound, all that good stuff here when it comes to, you know, scientific data. Um, so let's go ahead and look here at uh, a seismograph station or two around the area, uh, around the Mauna Loa region. Doesn't look like there's too much activity here. I'm not for sure if there's some wind event going on up there. Uh, that that kind of looks like wind out there on the seismograph station. Um, but where this earthquake struck here, I don't see any seismograph stations there specifically at that area. Up at the summit region. It, that definitely looks like wind. See that? Uh, and I'm going to double check that real quick. I just want to see what we got here across the windy map in terms of wind out there. Uh, we do have some decent storm systems coming into the west coast. We'll check that out here in just a minute. Uh, but Mauna Loa wind gusts. Uh, obviously up at the higher elevation here we're going to see some higher peaks. So, obviously, that is some wind gusts going on there across these seismograph stations. I do like to point that out uh, when we see that, uh, that noise, so to speak. And this is the noise here, the thickness of the graph. Not magma, not tremor activity. This is wind noise that can take place there uh, across the higher elevations there of, uh, of Mauna Loa. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Let's go ahead and double check uh, Kilauea Volcano. Uh, tilt meter, UWE tilt meter out here. Still shows some downturn here. Not a whole lot of elevated activity in terms of inflation. Uh, this area has seen some recent displacement of magma here recently. We're talking about 9 million cubic meters of magma being displaced from the summit area off to the southwest rift zone and further south. You can kind of see that uh, trail here across the earthquake uh, map. Uh, I wish that station was working, but it's not. Um... Uh, yeah, <laughs> if it goes offline, why even show it, right? Uh, I'm not for sure what's going on. These guys have had some major network issues out here recently in terms of the USGS, uh, the Hawaii folks. So um, we're dealing with it, right? We, that's all we can do. I'm not in charge of it. If I was, I would be working on it 24-7 until it was upline permanently. But uh, apparently there's some issues going on here. Uh, in, in the technical department keeping these seismograph stations up and running. So at least some of them. Uh, far as this station goes, let's see if this is up to date. 216, I, 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 I don't think that's correct. 216, uh, 15, uh, 15. Technically, UTC time right now is 216, almost 0, 0700. So we're offline here once again, seven hours offline. Uh, in terms of the monitoring. So, I, you know, that it's just one of those things we really can't uh, fix it, right? It's just up to the professionals there, to, uh, the ones that get paid for it, <laughs> to fix it. So, really can't look at the seismograph stations there for now. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that. Earthquake activity still remaining somewhat uh, elevated out here across the big island. And again, just kind of watching this... Uh, Little area here around the hill in a slump, just south of the hill in a slump. Uh, seen a uh, kind of like a trail of activity here recently offshore towards the Loihi Seamount. 
Um, let's see, Puerto Rico, what's going on here? A little earthquake activity around the Mariotos Trough, 4.1 coming in. Uh, looks like 130 kilometers deep, goodness. So watch this area here uh, closely. Uh, deeper activity here in the subduction zone normally means uh, some elevated movement about ready to take place out here. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, across the rest of the globe here, uh, one earthquake out in the Peru area. Looks like that was earlier this afternoon, a 5.2. Uh, aside from that, let me check out the Earthquake 3D globe here. See what we got. Um, uh, a little activity up here across the middle section of the Kurokamachaka. That area definitely... Uh, been watching that pretty closely this could be a bad sign here because this 4.4 is just prior to the subduction zone and normally that's a good key indicator there of some high stressed area and of course most of the movement here that we've seen let's go uh, check out the last 30 days 4.5 and above um, most of the movement that we've seen here out the uh, across the Kurokamachaka has been south and north up here so uh, this one was a somewhat deep, a 4.6. Uh, and we had another one there, a 4.5, looks somewhat deep as well. Uh, but it does look like areas upstream are starting to strain a little bit, uh, as you can see there on the map, with that 4.4, just below the 4.5 threshold. So continue to watch this. Um, you know, it's it's a, a dandy of a subduction zone, and the uh, uh, accumulation rate is quite high up here across the Kuro Kamachaka. It's going to stretch here from the Aleutian Trench southward. Japan Trench, roughly about here. Uh, average accumulation slip rate is around 83 mm per year. Um, it's, it's definitely got, I feel anyway, enough strain out here for a pretty large earthquake. And we're talking about something above a seven-pointer. Um... I, I've just been watching it, and I've been saying it uh, for a couple months now here. Um, and, and as time goes on, obviously the potential for a larger earthquake continues to exist out here. It, it's not like the San Andreas Fault where we're looking at uh, hundreds of years between intervals. And technically, it really shouldn't even be that much. But uh, this area should have seen some larger scale activity by now. So continue to watch that. This could be a little telltale sign here. Watch for these little signatures, uh, you know, that take place just prior to the subduction zone. Uh, let's see what else. What do we have here? Turkey, 4.4 earlier this evening, it looks like. Far as the rest of the model goes here, the, uh, the circle Earth. Uh, a little bit of movement here across the Java Trench. Nothing major going on out there for now. New Zealand, 3.4, 3.2. Nothing uh, of concern for now. Let's go ahead and check out the Iceland activity. See if we've got anything major to chat about up here. Um, got about 24 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. Some of it scattered out and about. But generally, when we see activity scattered out and about, that means that the rift zones are starting to get active out here. The rift boundaries, right? The separation of all this land. Uh, and that could be a bad sign in terms of some further increasing activity here across the Grindavik area. But for now, not a whole lot of activity stirring up out there. Uh, in terms of earthquake activity, the Savart Singi area, just north here, uh, continues to show somewhat inflation or leveling here. Uh, actually, the last run does look like it's in the inflation category. Uh, see that little uh, circle there above the previous circle. And um, that's the four-hour run. We'll continue to watch that. The key to watching all this uh, potential volcanic activity, of course, is uh, the uh, divergent boundary zones out here, the oceanic divergent zones. So uh, right now there's not a whole lot in terms of larger movement. We're seeing somewhat elevated activity out there, but uh, nothing uh, that I would feel is of concern for right now. All right, looks like uh, maybe we have some major space weather activity to discuss here. Let's go check that out real quick. Missy Mimi's just informed me that we have an X flare right now, an X 2.2 coming in. 
Whoa, we were just going to jump in the space weather, but uh, Miss Mimi's right on it. Goodness, uh, that is a pretty dandy of a flare. Look at that, an X 2.2. That is from the far side sunspot region here, 3576. I noticed this morning, if you check out my update video this morning, I kind of talked about that, how it was looking quite complex. Uh, that is currently producing a very strong X flare. Um, let's see, have we peaked out? We have not peaked out yet. So this could go up a little bit higher in terms of the uh, intensity of this flare. Currently in X 2.5. Um, let's see, have we, have we peaked out? Okay, it looks like we have. Upon closer inspection, looks like we peaked out there a little bit. But that is a very strong flare. Um, from the sunspot that is producing a, uh, a decent radio blackout there from the sunlit side of the earth. I'm going to just uh, keep, uh, let's see, where did that go here? I want to keep a screenshot of that because that, uh, that's pretty nice. That's a decent flare. Cancel this, let's create a new one here real quick. I just want to save this before it goes, uh, before it goes bye-bye. All right. So, yeah, um, doesn't look like um, we're going to see anything other than this radiation storm that's kicking up here. Uh, on, again, on the sunlit side of the Earth, which is centered over the Indian Ocean, it looks like. Um, so radio blackout could be observed out there. This kind of in intensifying also along with the uh, proton event that we've seen here recently. A massive flare. Goodness. Um, it's too bad. It really is too bad that was not positioned directly uh, facing Earth because it it did have the potential for a little bit uh, recently when it was uh, in the Earth directed view roughly about here. But uh, over the past few days it has declined. And then I noticed overnight and this morning it uh, definitely amplified here. So 3576 looks to be the culprit of that current X flare. It's a massive sunspot region, but unfortunately, it's uh, blasting off these X flares at the wrong time. So, uh, goodness. Either way, it's, it's a beautiful view. Definitely a, a spectacular X flare uh, eruption out there not for sure if it's got any uh you know eruptive activity with it in terms of a cme but i guarantee you that's not going to be earth directed just because of the position that uh 3576 is in all right so uh yeah what else we got here uh anything major going on in terms of weather yes we do we're looking at some major storm systems coming in here to the west coast uh, coming in looks like this weekend with a dandy of a storm is not that one, but the second one here we got a pretty decent uh, precipita uh, precipitation accumulation right there uh, from that second storm, and it looks like this low pressure system is going to stick around for a little bit, and uh, we'll watch and see what happens after that. But uh, it looks like these weather models have changed; they're always changing, and will continue to change. But uh, either way, West Coast looking pretty wet. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning uh, for the update Friday. All right, all right, Friday, right around the corner here. Have a good night, folks.